in the previous uh, discussions, we try to understand like suppose if I have any Boolean function and if I want to simplify that Boolean function, so I can at max minimize, like we need to try to minimize it whatever the possible we can, okay? Like whatever the function we have, we have to minimize it perfectly. Like there should be no uh, redundant pair in if, uh, that should present in any of the function. And this is our objective so that the, the hardware co cost will be less or, or the, the, the number of gate requirement will be less. Okay. So this is the uh, reason why we used to minimize the function. But sometimes what happens, uh, uh, the minimization of Boolean expression is done by designing the simpler circuit, like to implement, uh, uh, if I want to make a simpler circuit, then we have to minimize it, okay? But what happens under uh, certain circumstances, a minimal gate implementation of logic function may not be satisfactory solution to, uh, for the design uh, solution, okay? Whatever the design we want to make, if we have uh, come up with the optimum number of gates, so that may not be a suitable solution, especially if I'm considering the time constraints. What is the meaning of these statements? I will tell you in more detail when I will come with some diagram. Okay, so, uh, so the, like based on the time response or based on the dynamic behavior might be the minimum number of gates or the circuit with minimum gate uh, may fail or they may create some problem. Okay, and that problem or that they can create some glitch so those problems, we call them the hazards, okay? So uh, yesterday we discussed, in the previous class, we discussed about the redundant pair, right? So redundant prime implicants. And uh, I, I, I told you like, uh, what is the importance of redundant pair if they are not used, okay? So here, uh, I will explain you how those redundant pair can be utilized to remove the hazards. So before removing the hazards, I need to understand how the hazards can be considered or how, how we can see the hazards in any of the logic circuit. Okay, so let us try to see that one. So hazard or the, the glitch is nothing but it is a spy which is unwanted pulse at the output of a combinatorial circuit. Okay, so if any unwanted pulse is coming at the output due to the timing failure, so those kind of things are known as the glitch. Okay, so uh, and, and a, a circuit with the potential for a glitch is said to have a hazard, okay? So if, if any of the circuit uh, where the possibility of glitch is there, they can call them the hazards, okay? So this is one, a few points that need to be considered, okay? So let us try to understand few things. Basically, there are three kinds of hazards. The first hazard is the uh, logic zero hazard. Second one is the, uh, uh, or, or like static zero hazard. Second possibility could be static one hazard and the third uh, static zero, static one and dynamic hazard. So these are, uh, these are the three different kind of hazards. Uh, let us try to see how we can differentiate these three. I will explain you in more detail uh, with the help of circuit so that you will, you, you will be able to understand the things. Okay, so please wait. What does static hazards mean? Static hazards means, suppose at the output, I'm expecting the output should always be high. Okay, so this is my expectation. The output should always be high for any particular combination. But due to gate delay in the previous stages, might be for some period of time, the output becomes low. Okay, how this will become slow, I will tell you. Okay, so if this kind of pattern is coming, I was expecting the output should always be high but there is some uh, low glitch or low logic is coming for some duration of time. So this is what we call the static one hazard, okay? Similarly, if I'm expecting the output should always be low, and if I'm getting some logic high for some period of time due to the timing failure or timing error or timing mismatch, so we can call them the static zero hazard, okay? Third one is the dynamic hazard. Suppose if the input is, output is changing, like I was expecting output should be something like this. Let us assume this was my expectation, but during logic high, output logic high, there was a flip in the output and that becomes a low. And similarly during, during logic low, it becomes high for some period of time. So if this kind of operations are happening, 
or this kind of uh, the glitches are coming at the output we can call them the dynamic hazards so uh, in the dynamic kind of uh, i was expecting like this kind of waveform where both are there like logic high and logic one is there and if it's static zero i'm considering so i was expecting output should be low but i am getting some low pulse and similarly for static one hazard so these all are the hazards that we need to uh, discuss and we need to identify how they comes okay so before we understand or we, before we try to find the hazards in any of the circuit we should know the timing analysis of any of the logic suppose I, we have any logic circuit and we need to see the timing analysis so the best circuit is the pulse shaper circuit best example uh, to understand the timing failure or timing mismatch is the pulse shaper circuit suppose i have this circuit okay if you see this circuit i have used uh, in one path i have used three inverter and in the second path i have not used anything okay so if you see this one what i will get i will get at b b is nothing but this is the a bar c is nothing but this is the a bar n bar so that will become by default a and d is nothing but this is the a bar and we know that uh, like the input of this AND gate is one input is A bar and the second input is the A. Okay, so here we have a two inputs. One is the A bar and second input is A. And what is the A and A bar? What should be that output? Zero. It should be zero, like right? So F should always be zero. I'm expecting that if uh, we have three inverters in a series in one of the path and there is nothing in the second path. So the output of this circuit, whatever the circuit I have, this should always be zero. So ideally, this is what we can expect. Okay. And without considering the delay of any of the inverters. But in reality, this is not true. Okay. Whatever the input I have, whether A is zero or one, if the A is changing something like this, I need to, I, I will get the output always that is zero based on this logic, whatever we are explaining here. But let us try to see whether this is possible in reality or not. So let us try to demonstrate that thing. Okay. So here is some waveform. Suppose, what about the logic gates I'm considering? All the logic gates has their individual delay. Okay, it is not possible that the time at which we have provided the input at A, I will get the output at B at the same time. No, this is not possible. Each gate has their internal delay, gate delay that we call them the gate delay. So each each of the uh, inverter or each of the logics uh, have their internal delay. Okay, so. If I have applied A something like that, let's, let us assume A was something like this. Okay, I change the A from 0 to 1 at this instead of time. Let us assume it this time instead is TD. This is, uh, yeah, so I'm writing in, in form of TD only. So let us assume in TD. So this is 1 TD, this is 2 TD, let us, this, this is 3 TD, this is 4 TD, and then let us assume this is 5 TD, and so on. Just consider it. Okay, so if I'm changing, the input A after one TD, so for simplicity, let me consider the zero. Okay, so at zero time, I am changing zero, one, two, three, four. So that will be easier. So let us assume at T is equal to zero. Okay, I am changing the input from zero to one. Okay, so A is changing from zero to one, but we know that each gate has their internal delay. Let us assume that delay is TD. Okay, so the B I will receive initially before that I was getting like A was zero, A was zero, so the B should be high, but B will change its state after one time period TD, which is this one. Okay, so this is the time period which B will take to give the output. So the B will be reflected after this time period. Now, if the B is changed, 
now we will get the output at td time period so this inverter will again take one more time period td okay so the output c i will observe or the change in output c will be, will be observed at 2 td okay so this is how the output c will be observed similarly uh, the output d will be af uh, observed after one more td so the d will be here after this one so 0 1 0 1 was there something like that but the d will be reflected at this one okay now if we see we have a b and c d and all other things d is nothing but this is equivalent to a bar okay d is nothing but this is the a bar now let us try to make the logic if you see this time period during this time period a is 0 and b is 1 uh, a is 0 and d is 1 okay so i will get f is equal to 0 if you see this time period a is equal to 1 and d is equal to 1 okay so there is some this, this is like mismatch kind of thing we are getting 0 uh, 1 and 1 at both the inputs even at d and at a we are getting the same logic 1 in uh, 1 and 1 okay 1 and 1 we are getting so what it means uh, at this period of time i will get 1 at node d and 1 at a also and if 1 and 1 i am getting this f will become 1 after the time delay td of this end gate okay so i was expecting at this time period during this time period this is the time period here uh, the a and d both are 1 so output should be 1 but it will take some time so here it is taking td time period to get it high okay so f will become high here okay because a and d both was 1 if you see the second phase here in the in the next phase here a is 1 d is 1 so so again i am expecting d is d will be 1 so this is the time period that will be passed through this one if you see the next time period this one this time period and this time period a is 1 d is 1 so i will gain get again f is equal to 1 okay but if you see the next phase next time period which is this one this time period and this time period a is 1 and d is 0 okay so in this case output should be zero okay and but again it will take one more time period or td to get it reflected at the output okay so see here at the output logically we are seeing that output should always be zero but due to the time delay of each individual gates we are getting some glitch at the output okay we are getting some pulse at the output and this is how we can understand if that this td is zero if time delay for each individual individual gate is zero then we will get always f will be very uh, always be high f will always be high uh, sorry f will always be low okay but if there is some delay so we will get some pulse at the output f okay and this is what we call it the pulse separate uh, circuit similar kind of approach is applicable if i am talking about the hazards okay so this kind of concept is applied there as well so if you have any doubt on this pulse separate circuit how the waveform is coming like this so you can ask the question so that we can move ahead anyone has any doubt on this if you have any doubt you can ask the question So if there is no doubt, I'm expecting either it is completely clear or nothing is clear. So both are possible. But you have to tell me like whether it is uh, fine. Can we move ahead or not? Okay. Yeah. So how to remove glitch? Yeah. Wait, wait. I will tell you. Just please wait and watch. I will tell you. Okay. So this is what the uh structure how it is this is structure box okay 
Now let us try to consider the static one hazard. Okay. For example, I have a Boolean expression, and that Boolean expression is uh, something like this one. Okay. So let us uh, z is equal to s a plus s bar b. Okay. If I have the Boolean expression something like this, so if I need to implement this logic, then uh, what are the different logic gates that are needed to implement this one? Can anyone tell me how many gates are needed to implement this function? Two AND gate, one OR gate. Two AND gate, one OR gate. Any other? Yes. One NOT gate. One NOT gate is also needed because we have S and S complement, right? So one NOT gate is also needed. So if we try to implement, so this is how this circuit will look like. Okay. So we have A into S and we have S bar into B and then we need to R it. So this is how we can make the simple circuit of this one. Now, now let us try to check the timing diagram of this particular circuit. Okay. So suppose I have a function, something like this. And if I want to implement, like this is the simplified function. Okay. There is no redundant pair here. Okay. If there is no redundant pair, so the function or the logic uh, circuit will look like this one. Okay. So now let us try to check how the, uh, the waveform will look like. See here. I'm considering the A is kept at logic one. B is also kept at logic one. A and B are at one. And initially, S was logic one. So A is equal to one, B is equal to one. And initially, S was logic one. So if S is equal to one, then what will be the outcome? Like what will be P? P will be like one and one. That will give you the one. P will be one. What will be N? Yeah, I'm just simply talking about the logical, like I'm not considering delay. I will consider delay later on. Okay. Logic at N will be zero. Logic at Q, that will become zero. And logic at Z is uh, one. 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 Okay. So this is what we are getting. Okay. Now, what happens? If you see the timing, we are, we will get, like if I'm considering the time delay of each gate is TD. Let us assume the time delay of each gate is TD. Okay, whether it is NAND gate, uh, AND gate or inverter, I'm considering the time delay is TD. So I will receive this output P after TD time period. Okay, so the P will be, maintained high, even though there is a change in this a yes a or s this will be maintained like p will be maintained for logic one up to the next td time period okay similarly if you see here the n n will be maintained at the same logic up to the time td because the delay of this inverter is td similarly if you see this q will be maintained for the same logic for how much time? For how much time it will be maintained? The Q will maintain the same logic zero for how much time? Can anyone comment on this? Two TD. Two TD, perfect. Because one TD is due to this inverter and one TD is due to this AND gate. Okay, so it will wait for two TD. So the Q will be Q will change after two TD time period. Okay. So let us try to investigate here. Suppose initially S was one and now I'm changing S from zero, uh, one to zero. If I'm changing this S from one to zero, then what will happen? This P will change from one to zero after TD time period. So it will take TD time period to change. So see here, this P waveform is coming like one to zero after this TD time period. Okay. So this TD time period is for the, uh, to, to change the output P. Now let us try to see N because initially S was one. So N was G. 
zero, but if s is changing from one to zero, so n will become one after time td. So again, this is a time td. So n will change from zero to one. Now, if you see this one, uh, uh, this q will be reflected after two two td time period initially q or zero. But now because this becomes one and this also becomes one after two td time period, it will become one. So the q will become one after two td time period. Okay, after two td td time period, q will become one. Okay, and if we see here, uh, the z was initially one. Okay, so z will become one to zero. Okay, one to zero. But because there is some change, because uh, there was a uh, change in this td at this point, and again this is changing. So the uh, for some instead of time, because of the change in this, see here. After one td, this will become uh, uh, one. Okay, so this glitch will be observed due to this uh, uh, p s and n. Okay, this p s and n that q will uh, and q will also be changed. Like see here, the q was changing from zero to one. Okay, so because of this change. Zero to one, yeah. So in in first instead of time, it was changing from zero to one. So zero and one that will give you log uh, logic uh, one to zero, and then again it will give you logic one. Okay. So this is a uh, a glitch will be observed because of this two TD in the second path. Uh, we will observe the output Z from one to zero and then zero to one due to this timing failure. Okay, and this is what. We can observe the glitch, glitch over here at the jet. Okay, so this is how we should expect. See why it is coming like this. If you see here, uh, because P and Q are complementary. Okay, P and Q are complementary is in nature, and if the P P and Q are complementary is nature. It is not possible that both the input of this R gate will be same. Okay, uh, they cannot be the zero zero or one one. Ideally, if I'm not considering any of the delay, okay, because P and Q are complementary in nature, and but because of this timing failure, there was some instead of time at which both was like see the time at which this P was co converted into the zero, but this Q was not converted into zero because it required. Two TD to convert, okay, to change its logic. So at during a, a certain period of time, both the and Q was at logic zero, and because of that zero, Z we are we were of zero, and this is what we are getting this pulse, okay, and this is what we can call them the hazard, and this is the glitch, okay. So how to overcome this problem? Is the doubt like uh, you got the points from where this glitch is coming at the Q uh, at the Z? So this static zero is spike like this is the static uh, static one hazard. Okay, so this is the static one hazard. Spike zero is coming. Okay, and this is only because there was some time period at which P and Q was same. Because to reflect at Q we need two T D time period. But after T D time period both were D zero. And because of that, we were getting some static hazard at this particular period of time. Okay, so let us try to understand. So this is what we got. Like the output z will be uh, uh, changed from one to zero and then zero to one. Okay, so let us try to overcome this problem. Okay, so to overcome this problem, what we can do? we can do one thing suppose if we see the uh, the previous function whatever we have the function was something like this it was z is equal to s a plus s bar b okay and if we try to make the k map of this one so we have s in n a b so uh, 
how many number how many ones that will be paired based on that can even can anyone comment on sa sa means what if we expand this one this is nothing but this is sab plus sab bar okay so the meaning of sa is sab plus sab bar okay similarly if you see the meaning of this s bar b is nothing but this is the s bar ab plus s bar a bar b okay so the meaning of these two uh, uh, implicates okay so if we try to put all these things on the on the k map we will get some uh, k map something like this yeah so let us try to write those k maps uh, s a b this will be one uh, s a b bar s a b bar yeah this will be one this will be one and this will be one okay so this is what we have if we try to see we can you, sir. yeah please it should be zero where zero. s bar b s bar a bar b bar s bar a bar so it, yeah so it should be at zero position yeah this so sorry okay. sorry actually it yeah. will be yeah i th i think i made one mistake over here uh, if we expand this one s bar b so this will become s bar a b and then s bar a bar b yeah so this is the position it should not be now this is perfect expression and then the uh, k map is also fine yeah there was a mistake here okay so this is what we got the pairing now if we try to see if we can make like essential uh, prime implicants are uh, yeah we have already discussed this is the essential prime implicant and this is the essential prime implicant so this is the only two possible uh, essential prime implicant that we can do and if we, we will simplify this thing we will get the same expression whatever we have done it but there is one more prime implicant that is redundant over here okay so we can also make this pair okay and this is redundant which is which we have studied before so this is the redundant prime implicant okay now if we uh, uh, while solving this one while or while writing this function or to overcome that hazard if we include this redundant prime implicant in the function so that function will become something like this the, after including this redundant, redundant, redundant prime implicant the function will become z is equal to s a plus s bar b plus a b so the, here this a b is nothing but this is the redundant prime implicant this is this a b is the redundant prime implicant which we have added based on this pairing now if we try to make the uh, uh, circuit out of it okay so if you will make the circuit uh, from this one so the problem that was because of two time delay here and here we have added one more path which is this one and that will eliminate that problem okay the hazard problem will be removed or that can be that can be eliminated if i have added one redundant pair so this is the homework uh, just consider the td of each gate at uh, like the, uh, the the delay of each gate is td and try to change the input s from 1 to 0 and try to try to uh, come up with the timing diagram of all these things okay so this is the homework do it and check whether you are getting any hazard or any spike or not so i'm sure you will not get any uh, spike because we have added one additional path that is responsible to remove the hazard due to two time delay because uh, this will be reflected uh, uh, this logic will be reflected based on a and b only okay so that will always be uh, like if a and b is equal to one so uh, this will give always one okay so uh, any one of like if, if it is zero and if by default it is coming zero so there is one one which can maintain the logic high okay without waiting for two td time period so uh, I, I request just uh, try to uh, come up with a timing diagram of this uh, circuit 
and you will know that the hazard has been removed okay so this is how this is the way how we can overcome or how we can remove the hazard okay by adding the redundant prime implicates okay so timing diagram just do it at home you will be able to uh, get it how it has been done okay so the for homework i am just giving to understand the static zero hazard i am giving one expression which is z is equal to s plus a s bar plus b okay and similarly for dynamic hazard uh, we need to combine yeah see here uh, if we talk about the static one hazard there was a sop form for a static one hazard there was a pos form but for dynamic hazard you need to come up with the combination of both like pos plus sob sop so if both are there then the the dynamic hazard will come out so the homework is just try to solve these two questions uh, and then try to remove the hazards so yeah this is the end of digital logic module